is anybody burning to ask a question uh, of the panel? Yeah. Yes, all right. Yeah, thank you. I think my question is to Sergio. Um, how often and how soon after occupancy do you think post-occupancy evaluation should take place? <laughs> well, I don't think that there is a specific um, a specific answer to that because it really depends, first of all, the kind of the building. It depends, of, uh, depends on the uh, design process. And it depends on what you want to learn. Um, in a sense, sometimes, uh, uh, obviously, I mean, if you have uh, um, a building and you're trying to guarantee the achievement of specific targets, probably in a one year time, once actually the user have started to engage with the building and using it um, in the way in which obviously uh, the, the, the design has been, has been uh, uh, forecasting, one year time is probably uh, a good uh, sort of initial, initial analysis. But again, it's, it's building dependent. I'm saying one year time because most of the uh, post occupancy evaluation testing that I've done while I was working at the um, University, Deakin University in Melbourne, were actually within that time frame, within the year after completion. But uh, the other thing is, uh, um, again, what you want to uh, achieve, what do you want to actually verify? Because one thing is obviously seeing uh, the uh, effectiveness of the, um, uh, of the systems, of the air conditioning or heating or cooling system or ventilation system. Once, one thing is uh, the way in which you can evaluate and assess user response and how the user is actually working together with the building and actually making sure that that strategy is effectively being put in place. So it depends really on how the user have um, engaged with the building. If the users have been, uh, in a sense, well, I'm, I don't want to say educated, but have been uh, guided uh, and supported, uh, using, uh, using a term that was actually used before, in the use of the building, in order to make sure that other than just measuring uh, uh, physical quantities, you can relate that physical quantities to the human behavior and to the human response to the conditions that actually you have, uh, you have designed. Because ultimately, we always have to remember that we design buildings for people. We <laughs> don't design buildings just for buildings. Okay. Could I add to that slightly? I mean, I don't know how, how many of you are aware of the probe studies uh, done uh, shamefully a long time ago now um, for our industry um, and available from the Usable Buildings Trust. Um, but one of them was quite interesting. They returned to a building five years after it was built. And uh, what was telling about there, it was an advanced naturally ventilated building with, with passive stacks, and et cetera, et cetera. And the, build, the internal arrangement of the building had been entirely changed. They put mezzanine floors in, they'd subdivided open plan spaces. And the whole of that quite complex geometry of ventilation had been kind of corrupted. Now, uh, I think that's also a reason to go back, not just as soon as it's all snagged and completed and we know it's running, but down the line, how, how are these buildings used in the longer term? But it's, we were saying this morning outside the meeting that, that post-occupancy evaluation is something that really needs to be done and really needs to be published because we are, we are in the building commissioning design construction business woefully poor at returning to learn about the experiments that we've made. Um, and that's something uh, we need to do. We need, somebody needs to pay for it. Always the case, somebody needs to pay for it. Yeah, I mean, the, the soft landings um, approach it sort of gives some guidance on what to do when, and that soft landings is, is intended to be a golden thread running through the whole design process so that you know you're going to do post occupancy evaluation at the end, and you, you know you're gonna hand over the building properly and carefully, and so you actually design the building so that that is made easier. So, mm. um, so it's a, it changes the whole way you design. Um, I think, so g generally speaking, I think any building probably needs tuning yeah. for, a, for a year. So that's not, that's not post occupancy evaluation, e even in terms of its energy systems. It's just trying to get it to work right and making sure that it is working right under a whole different set of circumstances. And, uh, and during that process, you can pick up a lot of useful information about how the building's operating in a, in a functional way, not, not in terms of energy. So how people are reacting to controls, how people are, are uh, you know, actually using the building. We, we, one of the best bits of post occupancy work that Field and Clegg have done um, was on a school, Northampton, which was, was supposed to be looking at energy, and it did. Um, that's another story. Um, but it, it was, the staff weren't interested at all, and so it was all talking to the kids about how they 
how they were using the school. And there were all sorts of really interesting things about the architecture and the way the building was laid out that were incredibly useful lessons. And you got them really quite quickly. I mean, one of the classics, just one thing. Um, we designed a, a very nice dining hall, but it was only big enough to take a third of the school. And that was a, that was a policy decision by the school, and terribly efficient, because you can get three times the number of people through the space. Um, but it meant that um, lunch was... Uh, people felt sort of um, harried. It was a real big brother activity. You were sitting there for lunch, and you had people security people standing over you with walkie-talkies saying, eat up, eat up, eat up. <laughs> We've got to get the next people in. And so instead of being a, a rather good bonding experience, it was actually a, a, an unpleasant, hellish experience. So those sorts of things you can learn. Um, but I think going back over time, you, you, I think you start off with pretty regular visits and then you can, you can extend those visits as checks to make sure that things are... Yep. I think there's something fundamental to me about the idea of post-occupancy evaluation, which it must, in some sense, to be workable. It must be like divorce, no fault. Um, yeah. And it's like airline pilots, you know, they can re report near misses, but they don't have to give any details. And that's obviously not quite relevant to this discussion, but somehow the idea that you might go back and look at a building, why would you do that? Even if you got paid, it was going to give your client a reason to sue you. So somehow that's supposed to be a kind that's, of no-fault situation. That is, uh, that is actually quite a key question because who does the post-occupancy evaluation is one of the, one of the most important things because, uh, well, obviously, uh, the year that you need is, is because you clearly have to see how the building performs in all the four different seasons. But I guess that the important thing is that sometimes it takes one year to just yes, sort of organize right. a post document evaluation. Yeah. And especially if the designer is not directly involved, to understand what to look at and what actually you are trying to ascertain with your post document evaluation. Mm. Um, it is quite interesting because mo a lot of people now is talking of pre occupancy evaluation where basically you are, before the building is occupied, you are trying to identify exactly what aspects you will then want to measure within the post-occupancy evaluation. Because understanding that, and understanding how the building works, may at some, at some stage being um, diffi more difficult to uh, plan than designing the building, I don't want to exaggerate, in the, in, in the first place. So, so I mean, obviously it depend on, depends on the complexity of the building, but it depends also on what you're trying to to, to verify.